Hello everybody, my name is Mitch Tabian and this is another Java tutorial. Uh, I think this is number f 5. Yeah, it should be number 5. And in this one, in this tutorial I'm going to create a, a Java class called View Data that allows you to view all the data in a database. It'll, it'll, uh, if you have multiple tables it's going to prompt you to select which table you want to view and then it'll print out all the data. Um, also, last time, on my last tutorial I forgot to make a different different package for the SQL, so we're going to do that now. Uh, so we'll just call it package SQL, and then we're going to move add data into there. I think that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's fine. There we go. So I put that in the list class, I don't know why. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually create our tables. And I've gone ahead and created the tables ahead of time so that you don't have to, just so we have some data that we can actually query and look at. So the first thing I'll get you to do is go into your database, whatever it's called, and create and hit new and then go to SQL. And I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a link in the description to the source file and or the yeah the source source code and all you gotta do is take these text doc, these text files, restaurants underscore SQL statement dot text and test table underscore SQL statement dot text. Just uh, copy them one at a time. So copy one and throw it in there, hit go. It's probably going to give you an error, but it still worked. So refresh it, and you can see that restaurants was added, and you get all this data. It's not a lot, but it's um, better than typing it out by yourself. And so then go to new again, go to SQL, go to the other text, copy it, throw it into there, hit go. I'm not an SQL expert yet, like so I'm getting errors, but it still does actually make the the table, so you can go to test table, and there you go. So it's a little bit of data for us to query in our example. So now we are going to code. So create a new class, and include this. Oh, got a name. Uh, we'll call it view data, and there we go. First thing we'll do is import this guy. And Oh, the connection to private static connection private static scanner. Whoops. How does it do that? Import the scanner library. Okay. Uh, yeah, our username will be root by default and password be nothing. Why is this angry? Okay. And the URL, I'm actually just going to copy the URL from over here from the previous tutorial. And same database, so that's fine. And connection. Actually, I can copy that too. There we go. <coughs> oh, try catch. Let's put try up here. Okay. Okay, the first thing we need to do is ask the user which table they want to view. So, system out print line, because in our database we have, we're going to be in this database here and we have multiple tables, so we need to ask them what, which one they want to view. So, which table do you want to view? How does it do that? Don't do that. There we go. <clears throat> so we're going to create a tables array so I'll put it up here um, yeah array list tables what is that Why 
Oh, this is mad. Oh, static. Okay, and then we use a database metadata object called MD. Get metadata. Uh, so I'll show you where I got the documentation for this too in a second. I'm call it RS equals metadata dot get tables. And we are going to go null, null, table name pattern. That's what we're interested in. So we throw a percent sign in here. And null. <coughs> so where I got this from, uh, if you go to this link here, that's really long. I wonder, I'll put this link in the description. Um, let's write a note here so I remember. And so this is the method that we're using right here, get tables. So you can see we are interested in the table name pattern so you use get tables and we don't need that we don't need that we don't need that we want the table name pattern which is the table name so that's why we want that right there and then while the result set dot next So the reason we put a three here is because this is the third position in the get tables method right here. If we were interested in that column, we would put a percent sign there and have get string two and get string three. But we don't we don't need that. We only want the columns. So this so this loop right here is going to display all the tables. Or sorry, we only, yeah we only want the tables, not not the, yeah. I said columns, it's, I meant tables. So then tables, and we can add it to our tables array. And then we can have the user select it. I don't know why it does that. Here. integer so it's going to print out uh, like for the first iteration it's going to start at uh, actually plus, let's do i plus one yeah i plus one there we go because that way it will print out one first and whatever the first table is and it's just going to keep iterating <coughs> And then we're going to have a print data method. That we send the table that we selected to. So we will make that right now. And then our, our print data method is going to be sending the SQL query to our database. Print data and it'll be table and we're going to need to throw an SQL exception so the first thing we want to do is oops, retrieve the columns in the table so database metadata md let's call it get metadata and need a result set now we're going to use another one of the methods in that documentation but this time we're interested in the columns so the columns of the data of the table I mean sorry so we're going to put a null here and we're going to do a percent sign here <coughs> so just like last time but instead of the interested in the tables, we're interested in the columns. And we're going to create a columns 
array list just like we created a tables array list. Um, so I'll just add it manually. Columns. while loop so while result set dot next so while so what I didn't explain that actually so what this does is the same as what this does up here uh, a result set will iterate through every row in your database so first it will select this row and then after one iteration it will select this whole row so that's what that that's what this loop will do right here so columns dot Add the results that get string four <coughs> because of this percent sign right here. We want four. That's position one, two, three, four. So in this one up here, we use position three because we refer to position three there. Plus plus. So this is going to populate. A array list of all the columns. So now we want to print the data. So we need another result set. And a statement this time. Don't need to call it null. So statement equals connection create statement. Result set equals statement dot execute query. So we're executing a query, not a update like we did in the add data. We executed an update because we're updating the database. We're sending something to the database. This time we're, we're executing a query because we're selecting, we're pulling something from the database. So select all from table. Set I print line. Hey, there we Actually, that shouldn't be a plus one there. Yeah, this is the plus one. Okay, and then we write a for loop. Integer j equals zero. J is less than uh, columns dot size. I could spell. Columns dot size and j plus plus. <coughs> so string column name is going to be columns dot get index. And oh, we need an object because so here we need to use an object when getting the column variable, like what is stored in that position in the column, because we don't know what it's going to be. It could be a string, it could be an integer, it could be you don't know. So you gotta use an object here. So columns get j and close that. Oops, that's a j. <coughs> there we go. And then Iterate and give a space there. I think that's good. So, so this loop here is gonna the the result set. This result set here selects a row in the database. So like it would select this row right here with the ID one and 
it's going to print out it starts at zero so it'll print out a one here just to mark which iteration it is and then inside this for loop it's going to iterate over each column in this row so the first iteration it will collect the ID then it will collect the name and then it will collect the email so that's what that's what this is here and then it prints it out and then so once you iterate through every column which is what this for loop does it will go to the next row which will be this row right here and it'll do the same thing and print out the data and print then print out a space and go on to the next one so let's give it a test so which table do you want to view we have names restaurants and test tables which is what we have names restaurants test tables I don't know let's view test table uh oh column rating not found yeah that's what it is okay yeah I forgot to put the table in here so we know because when we first selected here we're we're selecting we're prompting the user then selecting the table we're interested in and then we pass the table to the method print data and that table is then used in the result set to iterate through the columns in that table so I, ex I, I put a null here this is supposed to be yeah because it doesn't make sense otherwise selecting the table will be pointless so we have to put in our table here and that should do it so we'll go to test table there we go so I can hit 2 which is test table and then it printed out all the data that was in test table so we go to test table it's all this data and I'll run it again and I don't know let's select restaurants we can see all the restaurants. We have McDonald's, it's rating, it's phone number, and all the other ones. So that's uh, kind of a quick and easy way to print all the data into a database. Hope I hope this was helpful, and I'm going to carry on with the SQL tutorials. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, but uh, as always, thanks for watching.